when considering Roth versus traditional, if you put in the maximum 22,500, even if you're at a marginal 40% tax rate, you'd be taxed effectively at $9,000 in taxes paid the year of the contribution. And that's going to grow over, let's say, a 25-year period if I retire a little bit early, around age in the late 50s, to 96500 if you factor in roughly 6% interest. And even if I pull that out at 10% tax rates uh, after it's grown, you're going to end up paying $9,600 worth of taxes roughly. And if you get a better return, let's say 7%, or leave it in there for a little bit longer and retire in your early 60s at a more traditional age, that tax difference grows to about 3000 If you achieve both the 7% return and uh, retire at a traditional age, it's more like $8,000 on taxes saved for that contribution. So to me, it seems like if you're under age 40, the advantage of, of tax-free growth with Roth are so significant that that would be the preferred landing spot uh, for your contributions. Here's the mistake it sounds to me like you're making. Remember, it's not about the total taxes paid. It's about the tax rates. It doesn't matter if you're paying more taxes later, okay? Uh, What matters is how much you have after paying taxes. And so if you're in the 45% bracket now and you're going to be in the 15% bracket later, I assure you tax deferred is the right move, okay? The math will work out if you calculate how much you will have left after paying taxes. Now, if you do tax deferred, you will pay more in taxes because you're paying it later. And so that money's grown in that tax deferred account over many decades. But that's okay. It's okay to pay more in taxes. That's not a bad thing. Okay? What you want to do is have the most after you pay the taxes. Now, Roth versus traditional is a very complicated discussion. Sometimes it doesn't even matter, right? Because if we're talking about an IRA contribution for high income earners, uh, you're really your only choice most of the time is a Roth IRA via the backdoor Roth IRA process. And some employers from time to time haven't offered Roth in their 401k or 403b. So your only option has been tax deferred. And so you don't have to make a decision when that is the question. But when you do have a choice, the rule of thumb is peak earnings years tax deferred, other years tax free. Lots of exceptions to that. Super saver is an exception to that. If you're going to have a lot of other income, in retirement, you know, social security and pensions and, uh, you know, uh, retirement or um, income property income and those sorts of things that's going to fill up your lower brackets, then you may be better off with Roth now. Okay? It's not like putting money in a Roth is a bad thing. It's never taxed again, right? There just might be a better option for you, but you got to run the numbers and you don't have all the numbers you need to truly run them because you don't know what your income will be later don't know what phase outs and the Irma cliffs will be in retirement. You don't know exactly what the tax brackets will look like. And so there's a lot of guesswork involved. You have to make some assumptions when making these decisions. Here's the deal though. If the decision is really hard for you, it probably doesn't matter much. And if it's a really easy decision, well, it will matter a lot, right? If you're obviously going to be in a much higher tax bracket later, or you're going to be in a, you know, the highest tax bracket your entire life, or if you're obviously going to be in a much lower tax bracket later, it's an easy decision, makes a big difference. Um, but if you're not sure, then it probably doesn't matter all that much. So don't worry about it too much. I've got one partner, he just splits his contributions. Half of them go in Roth, half of them go in tax deferred, and he knows that one of those is wrong. He's not sure which one it is, um, but he'll have plenty of tax diversification when it comes time to retire. All right, thank you for the question. The hosts of the White Coat Investor are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is for your entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.